The following is the community notification from the Aurora Police Department for sexually violent predators and sex persons required to re register as sex offenders. Sex Offender Legislative History The National Sex Offender Legislation consisted of the Jacob Wetterling Act, 1994, which requires all states to register sex offenders. Megan's Law of 1996 gave public access to the Sex Offender Registry. The Pam Lynchner Act of 1996 mandated lifetime registration for some offenders. It also established the National Registry. The Adam Walsh Child Safety Act of 2006 and updated in 2009 sets uniform standards within all states. The Colorado Sex Offender Legislation Persons convicted on or after 7-1 of 91 or released from the Department of Corrections for sexual offenses against a child. Convicted in Colorado or another state on or after 7-1 of 94 or released from the Department of Corrections for a sexual offense. Colorado law is broader than that of the federal laws. Registration is required for both adults and juveniles. Some convictions allow for the petition to discontinue registration after a specific time. The most serious offenses require lifetime registration. Basic registration requirements. First, must register at a designated frequency, either annually or quarterly. Two, must report changes of address within five business days. Third, must report changes in name within five business days. Note, mere designation as a sex offender does not limit where a person may live, work, or visit. Community notification in Colorado. Notification in Colorado occurs in two ways. One, passive and ongoing through the sex offender registration process. Two, active via community, community meetings for those sex offenders determined by the courts or parole board to be sexually violent predators, or SVPs. Facts and statistics about sex offending. Currently, there are approximately 18,100 registered sex offenders in Colorado. Approximately 65% of convicted sex offenders are placed on probation in Colorado. The rest go to the Department of Corrections, or DOC, and community corrections. Offenders may be caught for one type of an offense and be at high risk to commit another type. The crime of conviction is only one indicator of risk. Community responsibility. The community has vested interest in helping the offender be successfully managed in the community. Sex offenders have the same needs for housing and employment as other citizens. Harassment is a counterproductive to goals of the community management and may cause the offender to go underground. Any citizen who uses this information to harass, threaten, or intimidate will be subject to criminal prosecution. Sex Offender Characteristics Most sex offenders engage in crossover behavior. Many sex offenders have no criminal history. There is no typical sex offender, but all tend to be deceptive, manipulative, and secretive. 78 to 90 percent of sex offenses are committed by someone known to the victim. Sexual deviancy begins in mid to late adolescence. Sexual offenses are not impulsive. They are usually carefully planned. Most sex offenders are male. Sexually Violent Predators Criteria SVP 1. The person must be convicted as an adult on or after July 1st of 1999. 2. The crime occurred on or after July 1st of 1997 and consisted of sexual assault, unlawful sexual contact, sexual assault on a child. All include attempts, solicitations, and conspiracies. 3. The victim must be a stranger or a person who the offender cultivated a relationship 
primarily for the purpose of sexual victimization. Four, the offender is determined to be a risk to the community as a result of psychological testing, prior convictions, etc. SVP status is determined by courts or parole board or designated as a sexually violent predator from another state. Sexually violent predator, SVP. The legislature determined that sexually violent predators, SVPs, by definition, pose a higher risk to the community at large and therefore mandated that upon their release from the Department of Corrections, or DOC, the community must be notified. An SVP may be more likely to reoffend in the first year upon release from the Department of Corrections. Impact on victims of sex offenses. Victims exhibit many different responses, crying, angry, quiet, withdrawn. There are no normal responses. Sex assault by someone known to the victim creates more difficult recovery. Victims often develop post-traumatic stress disorder. Long-term effects include depression, anxiety, eating disorders, flashbacks, divorce, loss of sexual interest, loss of concentration, sleeping disorders, and suicide. Male victims tend to develop antisocial behaviors while female victims tend to develop depression. Responses are minimized when victims are believed and supported. Containment approach. The criminal justice supervision for the sexual offender. While under the supervision of the criminal justice system, they are required to submit to polygraph examinations, also required to attend sex offender treatment, specific treatment. Additionally, community members can help in the containment of sex offenders by reporting to law enforcement any concerns. Sex offender management. Most sex offenders in Colorado are supervised by the criminal justice system in the community. Probation officers and parole officers set conditions, monitor behavior, and impose sanctions. Sex offenders must waive confidentiality for treatment and case management purposes. Secrecy undermines the rehabilitation and threatens the public safety. Sex offenders must be completely accountable for their behavior and must agree to intensive and intrusive measures. What if the offender moves? If the offender moves from his or her current address, we will notify the community. Community protection and safety issues. SVPs do not represent all dangerous sex offenders. The community notification process and sex offender registration are not a complete deterrent to sexual assault. Please remember, vigilantism, harassment, threats, or intimidation of the offender is counterproductive to the best interest and safety of the community. We want them to be registered and visible in the community and not underground. Such activity is criminal and will be investigated and the actor will be subject to prosecution. The Aurora Police Department has a new sexually violent predator. His name is Elon Edward Everett. Date of birth is 8 1975 He's 42 years old, black male, 5'5", five 200 pounds. He has black hair, brown eyes. His current address is 15550 East 13th Avenue, number 106. Everett must register with the Royal Police Department, Sex Crimes Unit, quarterly, and through the duration of his life. The residence must be verified quarterly by the Sex Crimes Unit. Brief criminal history. Everett was transferred from the Denver Police Department on January 31st, 2018. Current address is 15550 East 13th Avenue, number 106. September 2006, he was convicted in Arapahoe County for sexual assault, the victim was helpless. In addition, sex assault, victim incapable of praising conduct. 
Case number 2005, CR 3213. He was determined by the court to be a sexual violent predator. Everett is currently on parole in Colorado. Everett was approximately 29 years old at the time of the incident. Everett was convicted in September 2006 for sex assault, victim helpless, and sex assault, victim incapable of appraising conduct. The victim was a stranger to Everett. Everett was determined by the court to be a sexual violent predator, case number 2005, CR 3213. His current legal status are conditions of parole. Schools near 1550 East 13th Avenue, number 106, Laredo Child Development Center, Laredo Elementary School, Altura Elementary School, Elkhart Elementary School, East Middle School, and Hinkley High School. Parks and Trails near 1550 East 13th Avenue, number 106, Altura Park, Apache Mesa Park, Center Hills Park, Freedom Park, Hoffman Park, Norfolk Glen Park, Hoops Park. Recreation Centers near 1550 East 13th Avenue, number 106, Beck Recreation Center, Expo Recreation Center. Bus routes near 1550 East 13th Avenue, number 106, Route 10, Route 15, 15L, 121, 153, and 157. Informed communities are safe communities. If there are any changes, the community will be notified.